Hey everyone, I'm Matt, and welcome to The Good Trouble Show. I've got a few thoughts on the mainstream journalists covering the issue of UAPs, otherwise known as UFOs. But first, please do us a solid. Hit that retweet and follow button on Twitter, or if you're on YouTube, hit the thumbs up and subscribe button. The algorithm gods will love you for it. So there currently is a battle between several factions in the Department of Defense regarding UFOs. One group believes it's time to level with the American public that a non-human intelligence is visiting us. The other group has done absolutely everything possible to hide the subject from the American people, and they have done this for over 80 years. This battle hit a fevered pitch when Congress discovered the Pentagon had been illegally hiding the reality of UFOs from them. Members of both parties were so pissed, they wrote 33 pages of legislation on UFOs in the National Defense Authorization Act that is now law. 33 pages worth. Think about that. Now, some members of Congress are at, that sit on intelligence and armed services committees are being briefed this month by individuals who were or are part of historical UFO crash recovery and back engineering programs. The DOD faction trying to put the cat back in the bag is scared shitless. So what better way to persuade lawmakers to give up on this subject than have journalists be their stooges and publish hit pieces on the UFO topic? So what is a stooge? Merriam's Dictionary describes a stooge as one who plays a subordinate or compliant role to a principal. Stooges are often referred to as shills. A shill is a person that publicly helps or gives credibility to an organization without disclosing their close relationship, which of course could be financial, with that organization. Now, if you're as old as I am, you may remember the slapstick trio from the 1930s and 40s, the Three Stooges. Mo, Larry, and Curly were the stooges of comedy of their time. We now have a new trio of journalistic stooges covering the UFO beat, Keith, Julian, and Hallman. Unfortunately, these modern day stooges are not funny. I give you stooge number one, Keith Clore. Clore recently wrote a piece for science.org titled, Pentagon UFO Study Led by Researcher Who Believes in the Supernatural. This piece of shoddy journalism, if you even want to call it journalism, targeted Dr. Travis Taylor, who was chief scientist for the group that provided a report to Congress on UFOs. It was nothing short of a hit piece meant to sow doubt about the report's credibility in lawmakers' minds. This article came from the guy who the investigative group U.S. Right to Know uncovered emails that indicated Clore was allegedly in cahoots with chemical giant Monsanto to covertly push genetically modified organism agriculture, or GMOs, in science articles. Their story, Keith Clore, how a science journalist worked behind the scenes with industry allies, is a case of journalistic stooging for the chemical industry at its best. I recommend that our viewers do a Google search of Keith Clure plus Monsanto and judge for themselves. The real kicker is that this guy is an adjunct journalism professor at New York University. You have to wonder why the dean of that school hasn't fired this guy. Okay, uh, the next stooge is New York Times reporter Julian Barnes, whose Twitter profile has a giant rooster on it. Some people, by the way, refer to a rooster as a cock. I digress. Uh, anyway, in his October New York Times piece, many military UFO reports are just foreign spying or airborne trash, Barnes attempted to preempt the UAP report due to Congress the following day with Pentagon talking points, except that the report did not come out until just this month. This guy has a history of trying to poison the well ahead of any congressional efforts on UAPs. Recently, Barnes snarkily asked about space aliens during a press call with the Pentagon. In his most recent article in the New York Times, he uses the term space aliens in a derogatory sense of a sort of slap in the face meant to cast anyone looking into this subject as crazy. He even quotes debunker and video game developer Mick West as a science writer, which he is not. His journalistic hijinks should win an award for making the New York Times look like the National Enquirer. And it makes you wonder if the editor of the New York Times is even bothering to keep the Pentagon Foxes out of the hen house. Barnes should change his rooster on his Twitter profile to that of a parrot. That would be much more appropriate. A Pentagon parrot, that is. 
Finally, we have Wall Street Journal's Hallman Jenkins, an expert on business and financial matters, not UFOs. His amplifier of journalistic bunko goes to level 11. This guy's holiday article, The UFO Crowd Wants an Alien Invasion for Christmas, calling for flying, or calling flying saucer enthusiasts a national security threat, was a giant present to the Pentagon wrapped in Wall Street Journal wrapping paper. In this article, he goes wild over an email he received from podcaster Lex Fridman, allegedly insinuating he was sucking the Pentagon's dick, which... Lex, I hope you did say that, because that's actually pretty damn funny. He goes on to attack UFO believers, again using stereotypes to place a tinfoil hat on those interested in the subject. Jenkins should teach a master class with Clora at New York University on how to scratch the Pentagon's back while they scratch yours. Now, I could be completely wrong about all of this, but these guys seem all too happy to push the Pentagon's disinformation. On one side of their mouth, the Pentagon says they are all for transparency, but on the other side, they are whispering to the people who will do their journalistic bidding to shut this conversation down.